Hello and welcome to another quick Dice to Hue tutorial video. This time I'll be taking a quick look at how we deal with Geo Shells. Support for Geo Shells was added in the latest release, 1.1. Um, prior to that, you really had no option other than to delete the Geo Shells, but now you can retain them and export them out to Unreal Engine if you wish. Now, I personally wouldn't use Geo Shells in Unreal Engine um, for various reasons primarily just for performance reasons. Typically, if you, for example, apply a geo shell to the entire body, as I've done here, then you are effectively doubling the poly count for your character for no real reason other than to blend a material on top. And I think there's better ways of sort of dealing with that scenario in Unreal Engine itself by blending materials, for example. However, quite a few people asked for geo shell support, so I have included it. And let's take a quick look at what we need to do to get them working. So here I have just a simple Genesis 9 character again. Uh, it has this blood effect um, pack geo shell applied to it. So it's a whole body geo shell um, with some blood textures on top. So that's what we'll be using for this demonstration. Other than that, I've done nothing really to prepare the character other than to set it to all base subdivision level just to speed things up. And I've also just added the ROM that I always use for Genesis 9 characters. Other than that, you would export it in the usual way, both as uh, an FBX um, animation and an Alambic cache. I'm not going to go through that again this time because that's covered in various other videos. So now let's jump over to Houdini and see what we need to do to get GeoShells working properly. So here inside Houdini, the only thing I've done is imported the three files that I exported out of DAS. Um, and we're still on the import node and I've done nothing else. Now, unlike GeoGraphs, you shouldn't have any problems with point count or shape count mismatches. Um, so we can see here that the point counts and the number of shapes match. What will be a problem, however, is that GeoShells do not get exported out of Dust Studio with any skin weight supplied. So if we have a look at a particular frame on our range of motion where the arm is moved, for example, we can see that on the FBX geometry, the GeoShell hasn't moved along with the rest of the character. And as I say, that's because currently the GeoShell Geometry has no skin weights attached, so it's not attached to the character skeleton at all. Um, it's not an issue for the alambic cache because the alambic cache always represents everything as it appears in DAS. So basically what we need to do is transfer the skin weights from another part of the character onto our geo shell. And typically you would be transferring the weights from the character's body, or more specifically from wherever on the character the geo shell was generated from. So the fix for this is done on the import node and we go to the geo shell section and we'll add a single geo shell operation. Obviously if you have more than one geo shell in your character, you can add more than one. And there's only two fields we need to fill in. The first is we need to select the geo shell itself. So under the drop down, under the name attribute, we will see Genesis 9 shell shape. So I'm going to select that as our geo shell. And then under the transfer weights from, I'm going to select Genesis 9 shape, which is the character's body. Now that we've done that, the weights have been copied from the body onto the geo shell. And from now on, the geo shell will deform along with the rest of the character. Um, it's basically treated like any other skin geometry for the rest of the Dust Hue workflow. So on my skin node, I would add the geo shell to my um, body's skin shape. And because it is treated like any other skin geometry, it will have corrective morphs and any other morphs calculated for the geo shell as well. So that's really all there is for working with geo shells in Tastu 1.1. Um, I hope you found that useful and I'll see you in the next video.